Well, let's get more on the Iranian story uh, and find out how the Labour Party think the government should be reacting. Uh, joining us now from Uxbridge in West London is the Shadow Justice Secretary, uh, Richard Bergen. Thank you for being on the programme this morning. So Good morning, how Sophie. Sh how should the UK government respond uh, to the news that uh, the Iranians have seized a UK flagged tanker? Well, I think that obviously it's unacceptable uh, for uh, those vessels to be uh, to be seized uh, and that they should be released. But what we need to avoid, and I'm pleased that some Conservative uh, MPs uh, have also spoken out on this, what we need to avoid is a kind of escalation and being dragged in by Donald Trump to something which could be very dangerous indeed. So what we really need to do uh, as a country and a government is use our diplomatic weight, use our negotiating skill really to get people around the table uh, also get, P get the United States uh, and get uh, Iran uh, back uh, into uh, the very important nuclear deal as well because going away from that risks things really getting out of control and I don't think any sensible person wants that. I mean, you mentioned Donald Trump there. Do you think we're effectively being dragged into a conflict that is really between Iran and the US? Uh, if we're not careful, then that could be the case. So that's why we need to take uh, a deep uh, breath. That's why we need to use our diplomatic weight. I think we can play a very positive role in this and we can play a very positive role internationally. And our role is to speak up for conflict resolution, uh, de-escalation, uh, the nuclear deal, uh, discussions about a whole range of things. But what we don't want to do uh, is end up uh, being just uh, the messengers uh, or sidekicks uh, of Donald Trump and John Bolton. I'm encouraged by some of the things that Conservative MPs have said uh, about this. Um, I don't know what the next Prime Minister is going to say about this, and that does concern me greatly. You, know, you talk there about Donald Trump, you talk there about John Bolton. Um, Jeremy Corbyn tweeted yesterday to say Donald Trump tearing up the Iran nuclear deal has fuelled confrontation. I mean, are you not worried that this just plays into some people's fears that Labour will side with people who aren't our allies against people who are our allies. I mean, Iran has seized a UK tanker here. Can you repeat the, the last part of that question, please? I couldn't hear that properly. Do you, do you worry that by talking about the US in this context, you're playing into people's fears that the Labour Party will support people who are not our allies above our allies, such as the US, when Iran are the ones who've seized a UK tanker? No, no, it's not about that. What it's about is trying to avoid the mistakes of the past. People will remember the great tragedy of Iraq, and I'm really ashamed that it was a Labour Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who sided uh, with George Bush on that. I think Jeremy Corbyn uh, and others got it correct on that. What we want to ensure doesn't happen is that the, re that the mistakes of the past aren't repeated because the mistakes of the past cost many, many lives. The mistakes of the past made things worse and fueled uh, terrorism and hatred, and that's what we don't want. Uh, we don't want to get in a situation where things get out of control. I think we're with the mainstream opinion uh, on this, where we see we don't want it to ratchet up, getting, uh, ending up getting out of control, ending up with military action, because if we did, it could be even worse in Iraq, and that doesn't help anybody. Can you really compare what's happening now to Iraq? If we end up uh, in a conflict backed by Donald Trump, then I think it would not only be comparable with Iraq, in fact, it could be even worse than Iraq. And that should really uh, scare everybody. So we need sensible negotiations. We've got a really important part to play diplomatically in this. We can use our negotiating weight. I think that uh, our government uh, has international respect and our country has international respect in a way that Donald Trump doesn't. So I think we need to use that for the purposes of conflict resolution, for the purposes of making sure this doesn't escalate out of control. OK. Now, you're in Uxbridge. Uh, you were campaigning uh, to effectively unseat Boris Johnson and in favour of the Labour candidate there uh, called Ali Milani. Now, I just want to ask you about some tweets that the Labour candidate set, sent back in 2012 and 2013. He tweeted that Israel has no right to exist. He called Piers Morgan a Zionist and he wrote, it will cost you a pound, hashtag Jew. Why are you supporting someone who said those things? 
Well, quite rightly, he's apologised for those uh, tweets and those tweets that are disgraceful that he did when he was a teenager. Uh, he's been on a programme of learning since then. He, in fact, went to Auschwitz to learn more about where uh, prejudice comes from and where prejudice against the Jewish community can lead. So he sent those uh, messages, those tweets as a teenager. Uh, they were wrong. He's fully apologised for them. And I'm looking forward to supporting him uh, today because if we're going to tackle racism, we have got to accept and we've got to push education for people. In our society as a whole, unfortunately, there are lots of racist views held. In recent decades, our society has improved in that way, but there's a long way to go as well. So what we can't do is demonise somebody for unacceptable, disgraceful tweets as a teenager. What we've got to do is encourage them to go on an education uh, process and think again about how the world works, how prejudice works, how racism works. And I'm really glad that Alan Milani uh, did that so comprehensively. You know, I understand what you're saying, uh, that he sent the tweets when he was a teenager, that he's tried to reach out to the Jewish community since. But at the same time, when Labour is trying to dampen down accusations that it is not taking anti-Semitism seriously, surely you can find candidates in high-profile seats who haven't made offensive comments about Jewish people in the past. I don't think he should be prevented from being a Labour candidate because of tweets uh, that he's apologised for that he sent uh, when he was a teenager. I'm sure that there's plenty of things that Boris Johnson did as a teenager, which, if you applied that rule, would rule him out from being Prime Minister. In fact, there's plenty of things that Boris Johnson has said and written more recently, including whilst he was an MP, including whilst he was Mayor of London, including whilst he's in the room to become Prime Minister, which actually uh, render him unacceptable and unsuitable uh, to become Prime Minister. OK, well, let's move on, shall we, because I want to ask you about a member of your Shadow Justice team, uh, Gloria De Piero, uh, who has said this week that she's not going to be standing for the Labour Party at the next election. And she said, uh, she, she quoted, a, a lack of tolerance for different viewpoints in the Labour Party frankly worries me. We have to have respect for each other, even if we disagree, because we're all part of this party. Does the lack of tolerance worry you as well? I'd encourage you, you probably haven't had a chance, I'd encourage you to read Gloria's full speech. She announced her decision to her local Labour Party uh, a few days ago that she's going to be standing down as an MP at the next general election, standing down from the justice team. In her speech, which is well worth reading as part of uh, your research for this interview, well worth the, full the speech. newspapers. Oh, you've read the speech. So yeah. what did it say about... So what, what did it say about myself and Jeremy Corbyn and working in the team together, then, as an example? Well, she was talking about how she's enjoyed working for you and, and she also praised Jeremy Corbyn. But she was... All, what, what I'm asking what you about said. specifically... What I'm asking you about yeah. specifically well, is the lack of tolerance of different viewpoints in the Labour Party. What she said in the, the speech, which you've uh, obviously read, there was a paragraph where she says in the speech that... Richard, she said, campaigned for Jeremy Corbyn in the leadership election. She, Gloria, campaigned for Liz Kendall in that leadership election. Yet we've worked together really well on important issues for access to justice and enjoyed it over the last two years. And that's an example to people in the Labour Party. So I don't think, and I know she feels this as well, by the way, she feels that her speech and her explanation to her members has been mischievously misrepresented by the press. And she's tweeted out that uh, about uh, it herself. So don't just take my word for it. See what she's no. put on Twitter as well. I understand that. I mean, she also said in the speech, as you say, that she's voted for Labour leaders who have never won, from Margaret Beckett all the way through um, to uh, Owen Smith, for example. But she also did say in the speech about the lack of tolerance for different viewpoints. Well, a speech is very long. It's interesting that you're interested in one particular sentence in it. But what I would say is my focus is I'm sad that the Parliamentary Labour Party will be use, uh, losing at the next general election uh, such an effective and energetic uh, member of Parliament who always speaks up for the area that she represents. And I agree, I agree, as John McDonnell, Jeremy and others have always agreed, the Labour Party is a broad church. It's a coalition of socialists, social democrats, trade unionists and other progressives. And long may it continue to be that. So I very much agree that 
in no political party, particularly a political party with over half a million members, do we expect everybody to agree on every single issue. Look, I campaigned for uh, Tony Blair, I campaigned for Gordon Brown, for Ed Miliband, I was ca proud to campaign for all those Labour leads and of course Jeremy Corbyn. So I think we are a broad church and long may we remain so.